whether it's boredom while waiting for Silk Song, a desire to see all that one can do with the game, or both, Hollow Knight players have come up with various playthrough challenges to make completing Hollow Knight a little more difficult and more fun. I had several of my own challenge ideas that I wanted to share in a video. Some of these may already have been thought of, but if so, I just haven't seen them. I think it would be most fun to take these challenges beyond just the Hollow Knight ending, but to the true ending, 112%, or even a God Home ending. Number 1. No Collecting Mask Shards I suppose you could be allowed to use charms that increase your health, and maybe make Fragile Heart unbreakable if you don't think that would make it too easy. You still have to come up with 12,000 Geo to do it though. Number 2. No Collecting Vessel Fragments You'll just have your regular soul gauge with its capacity of 99. It's kinda like the soul binding in the pantheons, but not quite as bad. I have a feeling Shaman Stone and or Spell Twister will be your best friend in this one. Number 3. No Pale Ore This means the only nail upgrade you can get is Old Nail to Sharpen Nail, or you could take it a step further and not even get that. You could allow fragile strength, including making it unbreakable, to make things a little easier on yourself. Making it unbreakable means 15,000 Geo though, more than you'd pay for all the nail upgrades. Number 4. No new charm notches. You can only have the three you start the game with. You might think you'll be fine because Shaman Stone is three notches, but it alone probably won't get you through everything. Plus, if you want the Void Heart, you have to go overcharmed with the King Soul in the birthplace. Number 5. No using any charms at all. The charm binding in the pantheons, but for the whole game. If you want the true ending, you'll need King Soul and Void Heart, but I suppose that doesn't need to count because you only need those for story and completion reasons, not to make combat or gameplay easier. Number 6. No fast travel. No trams, no stagways, no dream gate. The only exception to be made for this is using the tram exactly once to access the hive. You can get the dream gate upgrade, since you need it for the later seer gifts and upgrades, you just can't use it. Number 7. Try to find all the grubs without picking up the collector's map. How do you know whether you found them all? Easy, whenever the Grub Father gives you Grubberfly's Elegy. Unless you've got all the Grub locations literally memorized, this could be a challenge for experienced as well as newer players. Oh, and no cheating by looking up the Grub's locations online. Number 8. Always Overcharmed. This would need to be done as soon as you have access to enough charms to activate it. You can pick up new notches, you just always have to have more charms equipped than your current number of notches can handle. Number 9. Only using one charm at a time. No matter how many notches you have, you'll have to choose wisely depending on the situation you're going into. Number 10. Only using charms that cost one notch. You can pick up more charms so Salubra will sell you more notches and eventually her blessing, you just can't use the ones that cost more than one notch. Again, I might make an exception with King Soul for the true ending. With a total of 10 charms that cost one notch and 11 notches in the game, you could eventually have them all equipped at once without being overcharmed. Number 11 only using charms that cost 4 or 5 notches. Even with all available notches in the game, you can still only equip up to 2 of these without being overcharmed. Number 12. Complete the Hunter's Journal in the Enemy Randomizer mode. This'll be tricky since you don't know which enemies are where. It could be fun to try and hunt them all down though. Number 13, only using the fragile charms. And they have to be the fragile versions of those charms. You can't go to divine and make them unbreakable. 
It's a challenge because whenever you die, you need to go back to Leg Eater and pay to have them repaired, and you can't use Defender's Crest to get a discount. But hey, while you have Fragile Greed and it's not broken, you'll be getting more Geo than usual anyway. You could do this one in Steel Soul to do away with the need for repairs entirely, but you couldn't use any other charms to keep you from dying. Number 14, only use charms from a certain row or column of the charm menu. Better yet, one chosen at random. Here's a chart I made to help differentiate the columns. I think the sixth column, Soul Eater, Heavy Blow, Quick Focus, and Weaver Song, is the only one that fills out all 11 notches evenly. Like with the other charm-related challenges here, I'd make an exception for King Soul, but only when it's being taken to the birthplace to get Void Heart. As for the ninth one, you can choose whether you end up with Grimchild or Carefree Melody. If you want Lifeblood Core though, you can't use the other Lifeblood charms to help you open that door in the Abyss. The last row was weird, because it has a charm that only works at full health, one that won't let you heal, and one that only activates when you're at one health. If you get this one, you can use the King's Soul for whatever you want until you get Void Heart, though. You could even make it a rule that you have to use all of the charms in the column once you have them all. So even if it's a charm you don't like, sorry, you still have to use it. Number 15, never recollect your shade if you die. This is like Steel Soul without actually being Steel Soul. You'll be trying hard not to die, and for a legitimate reason. For one thing, you'll be spending the rest of the game without one-third of your main soul gauge. If you re-enter the room where your shade is, you can't fight it, you just have to move on. If you end up trapped in an arena with your shade, then that's just kinda too bad. I guess you could try to lure it out of there before the gates close. You'll lose any Geo you had without being able to get it back, but I mean, it's not like Geo is that hard to come by. You can still do shade skips if you want, you just can't hit your shade enough times to reabsorb it. You could also make a rule that if you accidentally reabsorb your shade by hitting it too much and attempting a skip, or accidentally chasing it into an environmental hazard, you lose the run. I hope you found at least some of these ideas entertaining, and I'd be excited if this video gave you the idea to try one of them. You could even do multiple at once in a single playthrough, whichever ones and however many you choose. If nothing else, these challenges can probably at least hold you over until Silk Song. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel for more videos about Hollow Knight and other games. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.